We brought you to the Virginia Tech Transportation Institute. We have an expert here. I'm telling you, wait until you see this. Andy Shout, it's good to meet you, sir. Good to meet you, sir. Thank you very much. You know, this interview isn't going to drive itself. So, <laughs> yes, it is happening. I said it, and I got it off right off the top. The research that's going on here, what we're learning and where we are today, does it inspire you every day? Does it excite you every day? What gets you out of bed every day? Absolutely, I think um, that's one of the most exciting parts is that we always are eager to get to work when we work at uh, the Virginia Tech Transportation Institute. Um, it's a paradigm shift in transportation right now with the, you know, the deployment and the new development of automated vehicles. Right now you can actually get uh, certain levels of automated vehicles, um, you can buy them right today. There's some production vehicles which would be a lower level of automation like a level two. And those are things like the Tesla which we have behind us today. Um, but I think when we start to get to the higher levels where we start to think about self-driving cars, um, you know, in probably two to three years we might see some deployments of some types of uh, transportation as a service vehicles like taxis in kind of small urban areas, uh, ones where the, the, the region is kind of defined and a little bit more controlled. And you'll start to see them kind of deployed as more taxi services or maybe even, um, you know, uh, the transport of goods mm -hmm. um, in some of those kind of utility and, and, and uses. So. And what's the role of the human being still going to be behind the wheel? Where where do we fall into, what are we supposed to be doing then? Right, it's a great question. You know, a lot of people think of, oh, self-driving cars, human no longer has to be in the loop. For the first time in a long time, the technology has actually arrived where we can actually do this. You have vehicles that can you can demonstrate that can drive on their own. The complexities involved with it are the robust environment and all the different types of things that can occur at any given time. Mm -hmm. And it takes a while to kind of run these systems, build the artificial intelligence and the machine learning so it can handle any kind of situation that occurs. So that's one problem. Right. The other problem is um, people aren't used to or have experienced uh, automated vehicles and self-driving vehicles yet. So um, until they've experienced them and tried them, there's still a level of distrust and a little bit of uncertainty about them. Now, can they make a vehicle that will automatically not drive to my mother-in-law's house? Is that <laughs> gonna be possible? I'm sure that there's gonna be some settings in there, there will that, be uh, you will be able to, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very good. Are we, I'm just asking, because I mean, it's practical. We need the practical things. Uh, all right, let's talk about the road itself. This is a pretty remarkable highway road. Not every day we get to conduct an interview in the middle of a highway. I think it's a pretty cool thing. This was built uh, during the century around 2000, right? Right, right, we launched it around two, the year 2000, so it's about 17 years old now. Got uh -huh. it. And what do you do on this road? What goes on out here? So this road was actually built to potentially someday even connect to the interstate um, through these mountains as a way to help bypass traffic. But in the interim, in the meantime, you know, we wanted to also use this as a research facility. So they built a segment of it available to us to do research. Uh, what makes this a smart road is that we've essentially built it to have a lot of different communications and features that are not that most normal roadways don't have. Uh, for example, we can create weather on about a half mile of this stretch, rain, fog, and snow, so that we can really do research in kind of all different weather conditions. Uh, we also have a variable lighting section uh, that's just under a mile long, and that allows us to actually create 95% of the roadway lighting in the U.S., the overhead roadway lighting, uh, so we can change the, the, the heights of the different lighting, the types of lighting units that are, that are used, and that helps us basically create almost any kind of environment that's in the U.S. and on our nation's roadways so that we can test uh, new technology, we can test uh, tires, we can look at lane lines, visibility of lane lines on wet pavement versus dry pavement, and also we have 14 different types of concrete and pavement on here, so we can really look at a variety of things. Really? 14, how long is it? Uh, we actually just extended a piece that we'll be opening up next month, um, so that makes it about two and a half miles long now. You guys actually open up this facility to the public, I, I think a couple times a year, is that right? Right, we do an open house. Uh, we allow public to come visit. We also do a couple school days. So we have, you know, 400, 500 students from uh, all sorts of different uh, uh, schools or, uh, around the uh, New River Valley come and, and take a look and go through a variety of our centers and look at technology and come see the road. Got it. And how fast are cars going down, up and down here? You can do speeds up or 65, 70 miles an hour on this road. Um, it's ready to basically open at any time. So it's built to DOT specifications. Are people surprised at how much cutting edge research is really going on, not just at VTTI, but around the entire campus? 
there's a lot of Hokies out there. Right. There's a lot of alums out there, and, and the word gets spread. You'll find Hokies all over the nation. But people are surprised about the level of technology and research um, that's going on at Virginia Tech. And even people in Virginia don't know about the tremendous facilities we have here. So. And you personally, what do you love most about the gig? <laughs> I love the Besides ability standing to... <laughs> doing this interview. I mean, I'm sure that was first on your list. Of course. So done. close number two. To yes. Have this <laughs> Very nice. Uh, it would be I get to see some of these new vehicles and the new technology before they're deployed. I think the biggest thing for me is that we have the uh, potential for saving a lot of lives. You know, mm -hmm. it's upwards of 40,000 fatalities a year. And um, a significant portion of that is due to human error and, you know, human contributing to that problem. And if we can safely and efficiently kind of remove the human from the loop, we have the potential to save a lot of lives. And I think that that's probably the most exciting thing for a lot of us mm -hmm. is that we can um, really make a difference uh, on our roadways.